It's an exciting week this week. The A7R2 week. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I really like about what's happening with the Sony lineup is the fact that third party lens makers are beginning to take notice mm -hmm. of the camera and make lenses. And the first one on board uh, has been Zeiss. And I'm fortunate enough to have with me two Batis lenses. Not badass. Well, yes, could be badass. I, unfortunately, wow. they probably. I think they are badass. Yeah, they're, they are pretty <laughs> darn cool lenses. So uh, in this hand, I have a 25 F2. Take off the lens cap. Oh, thank you. In this, my headphones off. In this hand, I have the 25 f2 baddest lens, and on the camera, I have the 85. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of this, and I'll, I'll let you hold this in a second because I know you're dying to touch it and play with it. Is first off, it's the the whole design here is so smooth. Mm -hmm. If you look at either one of the lenses, there's none of that recessed, you know, outcropping. Everything is, you know, kind of like rocket. Streamlined smooth right down to the way the, the lens cap sits on the camera uh, There is no knurled knob. It's a soft rubber mm -hmm. knob and what's really unique is there's a little Right, there's a an OLED OLED showing you uh, Where you're focused and your depth of field and of course your depth of field will vary as you change the aperture Correct now I should mention this only works in manual, right? But if you can get a, a shot of the screen you can see how fast it delivers and mm -hmm. of course if you change the f-stop um, So if I went to four or five for example, you can see it immediately shows the four by five mm -hmm. now I don't know about you I I still look through the camera. Yeah, of course. And I would use the focus peaking. You know what? It's a gimmick. It, it well, it's it's it is nice. Frankly, now, it's a gimmick. <laughs> very, I like it. It's very sexy, it, but it's a gimmick. Could be the future of things. Well, let's talk about the lens quality mm -hmm. and the image quality that comes with this. Built well, really weather sealed. You'll notice that when you look at this lens, there's like this yeah, blue rubber rubber gasket here, mm -hmm. and it actually makes. The lens very tight when you put it on. I, I first the first time I put one on, I thought that was a problem, and then I looked at it and I went, "Oh, rubber gasket! Wow, you know." So that's very cool. So I've shot with this. It's a very good lens, but almost all the lenses we're seeing out there are pretty good. What we've done for you is we've done some tests with these two lenses, with a number of other lenses, and there'll be available files in the article that you can download, mm -hmm. so that if you'd like to, you can just put them on your own computer and make your own comparison. Right. We're finding they're good from corner to center, and you know, especially when you go down to 5, 6, F8, normal operating range, these things are beautiful. They're fast, they're weather sealed, and they're just one more lens lineup here, and Zeiss is uh, coming on board to do some really cool stuff. If you like, well, first of all, let's say this. These are not the same as Otis lenses. No. You know, these are not $5,000 primes. These are $1,200 primes, which, and they're from Zeiss, and, it may, and they're made in Japan by yep. Zeiss, uh, from, oh, some OEM. Uh, so don't expect these to be Otis. No. But on the other hand, they are right up there with the best lenses yes. of their focal lengths. And one of the things I think is very interesting, and we need to talk to Zeiss, why is this 25 millimeter? Not, not 24. 24. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, there's really no difference. When we were doing our tests, I thought, all right, I'll match it up. They're, the difference between 25 and 24 is like you know, immaterial. Uh, but I think that's just a little bit. Uh, we'll make it 25. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever reason, it, it is Zeiss. They have right. always been known to make great lenses. I have friends that only work with Zeiss Primes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're moving over to the Sony and you're looking for things and you want a good Prime, you know, this lens is certainly, I think, the beginning, or these two lenses are certainly the beginning of they're maybe light. it. Well, they're, they're really light. light. They're very light. And that, to me, I've got a trip to Europe coming up in September, and I'm thinking mm -hmm. that the uh, A7R2, without the grip and without, you know, just the, the camera body, which makes it as small as any uh, mirrorless camera, these two lenses, plus the Sony 50mm 1.8, yep. which is one of the world's great lenses, if you look at DxO, so. it's just below the Otis lenses in terms of image quality. So if you want to do a trip with three primes, 25, 50, 85, 
can't beat this combo. So, I can't say anything more than they're great primes. I'm getting back to prime in mm -hmm. my Nikon days. I was zooms. I went from you know 24 to 70, 70 to 200, tried to make my kit as small as possible. But uh, now, since I've gone to the Sony side of things, I'm building up my primes. I've got the 90, I've got the 35, I've got the two Battises, mm -hmm. the uh, 50. It's um, no, it's a good setup. Yeah. So anyway, I would highly recommend these. Uh, you won't be disappointed if you're into the good prime, and especially one that is very unique in design and feels good mm -hmm. to operate, then this is it. Great image quality, and they are badass. Batis. We'll see you on the Loomis landscape. <laughs>